So you want me to go ahead and start sharing Hi, everyone. Out? Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to tonight's session. I have just a few housekeeping items for you before we get started. You'll be able to use the Q&A button on your screen to type your name, your questions um, to our presenters at any time. Your camera is off and so is your microphone. So the panelists cannot hear or see you. This is just one of the many different sessions happening with the Colorado Virtual College Fair. So make sure that you sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week um, on the same website that you are that you registered for this session. So now I'm going to stop sharing my screen and turn it over to our presenters. All right, everybody. Well, welcome uh, to today's pre evening presentation. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be with everybody. <clears throat> we would uh, all love to be there with you in person, but we know under this current pandemic issue, this is um, the best we can do. But please do not hesitate to reach out. Um, know that you're not in this by yourselves. And we are here to hopefully provide some knowledge and information about this first generation panel and access to the pipeline of higher education. But before we get started, one of the big things that always comes to mind is what are some of the things that you think classifies you or others being first generation? So this is a time and opportunity for you to please go ahead and utilize that chat function because we wanna make this an interactive uh, presentation for all of you. And so we can both take the most out of this opportunity that we're gonna be here with each other for the next 45 minutes. So please, if you wanna go ahead and bring up the chat function and go ahead and type in right now what you believe or the questions section of what you believe the um, meaning of being first generation really is. Go ahead and type it on in there for us. Okay. So we're seeing a couple of people individually submitting some things and we're noticing that yes, it is to, to be the first person to go to college, to be the pioneer of your area, to um, really understand that you're really gonna be that one who's trying to navigate a whole new system having been here in the US by yourself or being the first in the opportunity to climb that access to higher education. So if your parents uh, if your grandparents went to college, but your parents didn't, then that means that you still are going to be first generation. If your parents got a degree from another country, but you're going to be the first one in this country to get it, then you are often also a first generation scholar. So, and if your siblings went off to college, but you haven't, um, you, generation is actually based off of your parents, not your siblings. So you still are also first generation. So with that, I want to turn it over to some of our guests who are going to be joining us with this panel, and I'll let them introduce ourselves as we get ready for today's event. So, Rebecca. Hi, everybody. I'm Becky Chavez, and I was the director of admissions at Front Range Community College in Longmont. Um, I am now a trio, a director of a support program for first generation students who go to college. Um, so if you come to the Westminster campus or the Boulder County campus at Front Range, we will be there to support you as first gen students. Um, I am from Colorado. I went to what used to be a small high school, which is Roosevelt High. I am a first generation college student. Um, it's probably one of the things I'm most proud of, of my accomplishments. Um, and I have a big long story. It'll trickle in throughout the day, but I want to make sure we have enough time to get to your 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 questions and your stories too. So, welcome. Thank you. And myself, Lorenzo Gamboa, I am the Senior Associate Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Santa Clara University. I'm also a Colorado native. Grew up in um, the southern part of Colorado, a little place called Aguilar, Colorado, and graduated with eight people in my entire high school class. So one of the fun facts that I like to say is that I at least graduated in the top 10 of my class. So I was able to go to college, uh, obtain a degree, but I also remember many of the you know tough stories of trying to figure it out of how do you pay for this? How do you help your folks? How do you balance your education, your desires, your dreams, and how you can get to the next level? So 
I look forward to sharing part of my story with you guys a little bit later and hopefully trying to answer some of your All right, well, good evening, everybody. My name is Frank Lado, and I'm the Regional Admissions Counselor for the University of Oregon. Um, and I myself am a first generation student as well. I was actually born and raised in El Monte, California, which is actually a small um, town just outside of East Los Angeles. And so just not overall, uh, not only was I the first of my um, family to go to college, but um, the community that I grew up in, not a lot of um, college going students and the only of my neighbors um, to go to college as well. So it was a huge step for me. I am an alum of the University of Oregon as well too. So it was a pretty big um, shift for me and my family to not only attend college, but to go to an out-of-state college. And I know a lot of you all are um, curious to know of just are in that same boat and are wondering of, you know, what to do next and what you should be doing um, during this time and as you're going into the college search process and um, soon be applying for colleges if you haven't already started. Um, so I'm happy to share a little bit more about my story throughout our presentation today, um, but I am really excited that you're all getting to join us this evening. And you're all very fortunate. We have over 30 years of combined experience here on this panel, so please feel free to let us know how we can be more of a resource for you. And this actually popped up today and I felt it, it fit in with talking to a group of first gen students. Um, every great dream begins with a dreamer and always remember you have within you the strength, the patience and the passion to reach for the stars and to change the world. First gen students are dreamers. They are motivated and they are the leaders who are going to change the world by sharing your voice and your story and your experiences and advocating for your community. And next we'll look at what are the assets of a community college student? Um, so some of the characteristics, these are just uh, some of them. So if you hold on a little bit, Lorenzo, with the slide. Um, so first gen students are open-minded. They're problem solvers. They figure things out. Um, I learned a new term recently is educational history. First gen students don't have educational history because they don't have necessarily somebody in their family who has gone to college before them. And so they're, they have to figure out things on their own um, and they're survivors. Um, they're ambitious, they're gonna go after our goals. Um, family oriented, and we're in touch with reality. Uh, I think part of the circumstances of being first gen is you kind of are very um, uh, pragmatic. I can't think of a different word for that, but you you look at what's your, uh, I can't think of the word. And then your storytellers. Like I was saying, your story is probably one of the strongest parts of who you are to help others understand what first gen students are. And oftentimes first gen students are seen from a deficit or right away as a negative because they don't have that cultural, that educational history um, and that tie to knowing of how to navigate things. But they're so much stronger than anybody could believe. So if you could in the, the question and answer again, type in some other characteristics of first gen students that you can think of. As we wait for some of your comments, I would say that some of the things that, you know, reflected for myself in this section is having to be the bridge for the family, right? Because you're trying to navigate a whole different realm that is so foreign to all of you involved, yet you're trying to, again, communicate to your parents the sensitive information that's going to be needed and required for you to get to the next level. And yet you are also trying to strive to figure out what you want to do with your education. So... My colleague mentioned, please go ahead and fill in. Yeah, some more information here. We saying that, yes, responsible, oh. self motivated, independent. Continue. Right. That's awesome. Any other, any other characteristics? Again, responsible. Yeah, a lot of times you're navigating things on your own. You're taking care of siblings, you're taking care of parents, you may be serving as 
an interpreter for your parents or other family members. Um, so there's a lot if you in being a first gen student. And so you are also creating your own path. Again, nobody's come before you. And so you can go your own way. Um, I know my sister went to college before me and she was first of her class, student body president, 4.0. And I came, but nobody was there to support her along her way. She wanted to be a physician. Um, she got an awesome PSAT score, but nobody told her that she, what she could do. She had got no scholarships. Nobody there was there to guide her. So she created her own path. Um, and she's now an attorney. So it was a very difficult path. It was one with the lots of hills and dead, and, and it took a lot longer for her to finish. Um, but she created her path because she was resourceful. She was resilient. Um, she dreamt about what was possible. She didn't ever think about becoming an attorney, but something motivated her and piqued her interest to do that. And now she's serving others. She's a higher education attorney in the state of Colorado. And so she's there to protect um, our institutions to make sure everybody's safe and doing the right thing and things like that as well. Some of the other big ones that we often think about is that we're so community engaged. And so that's one of the things that I think most students realize or feel like they have to deal away, move away from in order to create their own paths. When in reality, getting access to education is just gonna allow you to be more engaged and find the passions and resources that you really want for whatever community you wish to serve. So things to consider when you're first gen. Yeah, absolutely. So I just wanna share with you all things to consider when you're first, as a first generation student. And to be honest, things that I wish I knew and wish I considered when I was a first generation student as well. Um, and so I just wanna talk about the first two questions to pose to yourself, you know, or what resources are available to help me be successful and ensure I graduate on time? And what resources are available to my parents, family members, support, um, support people to ensure my success? So these are great questions to ask yourself as you're going through the college search process, because it's not about just getting through the door, right? It's talking about getting admitted to your college, but also finding the best fit. You're gonna hear a lot of college institutions talk about finding that right fit. And a huge part of the piece to that puzzle is finding out which institution, which college is gonna have the best resources um, that are gonna support you. Um, and your needs, right? Whether that be um, financial resources, whether that be um, a multicultural center to find your home away from home, right? So things like that, that you're that um, a, a tutoring center and knowing that you um, need additional help and support for um, academics. These are great questions as you're going through the panels and presentations and going through um, college fairs of making sure to ask these key questions about um, different resources. Also of the of the community, you know, are there students and faculty on, on this campus that look like me? Are there people in the community off campus that look like me, especially if you're planning to move further away from home and you're not as familiar with that area? Um, now, just speaking from my own personal experience, you know, moving away and, you know, was moving from Southern California to anywhere was going to be a huge shift because, you know, like growing up in one of the most diverse um, spaces. But, you know, that was something that I did consider when moving away of moving away to a place that was uh, less diverse of, you know, what challenges were there, those going to pose to me and my family, but how I was going to make that work and make that institution my new home. Um, and maybe you might be on the other end, right? Maybe you're coming from a smaller community and are going and looking to larger communities and looking how to um, how to fit in with a more diverse population as well. So um, those are just important questions to think about because also this is gonna be your new home for the, the next few years um, and your new community that you're gonna be building. The last thing I, uh, that we have there is just a talking about uh, money and we'll talk about it a little bit more further on in our presentation, but it's really, really, considering about, um, about loans and avoiding loans as much as possible, especially ones that accrue a lot amount of interest. So looking more on scholarships and grants, which are you know forms of aid that you don't have to pay back, where loans are types of financial aid that you do have to pay back to distinguish the two. All right. And we can't stress this more, um, but 
it is really critical that you have now the conversation about how much you're willing to invest in yourself as an individual, as a family unit, um, what are what are the available resources and have the conversation earlier rather than on May 1, which is the national deposit deadline that students are really worrying about. Okay. And going to our question and answer, um, the question was, as far as being a first gen student, could this potentially affect how colleges view your desire in applying to that college? It can only help you when you're writing your essays, when you're looking into your colleges, share your story. There's a lot of resources like Frank just went over um, that support first gen students. There are a number of scholarships out there that will support you as well. Um, institutions are learning how important it is to support first gen students because then it helps all students as well. Um, so yeah, they want you there for sure. And they do because you add a different flavor. You bring something unique, something different to a conversation, whether it be in the classroom, whether it be in the residence halls, whether it be simply just hanging out with all different individuals, but there are some major distinctions. And one of the big things that we know about first generation families is that you tend to unfortunately have to deal with a lot more realities of the social economic status side of it, which means that right now you could see most first generation families are within that lower income bracket level. So your challenge of just even gaining to that level of wanting to aspire to higher education is already something that you should be accomplishing. I mean, so very proud to be able to accomplish and wanting to desire even more, okay? So we, I, we want you guys to know that we understand a lot of these issues and we wanna help you um, and understand that you already have um, overcome some major, major obstacles just to get to this one point. So we could, we congratulate you guys for even being here tonight and seeing that this is something of value for everybody that's involved, okay? Okay, so- Now, um, when we're first, yep. Oh, I was gonna say, so, you know, as a first generation um, student, you know, we are often um, given or, or told, you know, what types of jobs that we need to have and to pursue and should we go to college? Uh, what majors are we often told to consider? Um, so this is another opportunity uh, that we're asking for you all who are viewing today um, to enter into the chat. You know, what are what are some things you've heard either from your own parents, from family members, from um, from others in your life, right? What are majors or jobs that you're told to, to pursue or that you're asked to do? I'm seeing the first one come in, business, yep. Yeah. Computer sciences and information technology, keep them coming. Science, yep, yeah. a lot of sciences. This is all great to see. But I want to try and see if maybe a couple of you might get these as well, right? How about being the first uh, in the family to be my engineer? How about being the first in the family to be my doctor? Being the first one in the family to be business, my lawyer. my architect, right? And I can say from my experience, because my dad, he worked at Kodak because it used to exist in Colorado and he worked in the dark room and he, the only people he saw at Kodak who made any kind of money, because we were always living on the, the, the from paycheck to pay, paycheck to paycheck, which I didn't even know until I was an adult. Um, but he was always telling my sister and I, mijas, you need to become engineers because to him, that's the only job he ever saw that made money. Had my sister and I gone into engineering, it would have been an ugly, ugly situation. Um, things would probably have fallen down, um, but we're both in education because we understand what it is to give back. And we may not have a lot of money, um, but we have a lot in our heart and our soul where we know we can make that difference. So this Mija did not become an engineer.
Absolutely. And, you know, and, um, you know, why? Why are we asked to consider these majors? I feel like Becky had um, a great uh, response to, you know, our families are looking out for us. They want um, to, for us and, and work really hard to build better lives um, for us. And, you know, it is 100% okay if you're looking at being um, business of going into, um, you know, architecture and engineering. In fact, we actually need more students from first generation backgrounds in those fields and making a difference. We also want to encourage you to consider other majors too. You know, why not looking into, and I think I saw it coming in through the Q&A of looking into the arts, um, looking into the social services and social work and psychology, um, looking into going into government and politics, especially representing, um, you know, where you come from and at being an advocate. Um, and then of course we had to include student services of what we do. Um, you know, with of us landing where, where we all are at now in higher education, there is not necessarily an undergraduate major in admission counseling, but we were all able to make this pathway of working in higher education and, um, and, and giving back and letting other students know from, our, from both our backgrounds and both from different backgrounds that, um, you know, college and, you know, other postgraduate opportunities are possible and accessible. So we want to think about as you're going in and looking at different colleges and considering your majors that the STEM field and medical field and business field are great. And these are also great options too to consider. And one of the big things that we wanted to know uh, for a lot of students is the persistence rate. And going back to Frank's earlier comment of, you need to really understand the colleges and opportunities that you're gonna go into because you wanna know what support aspects do they have there to make sure that you can fulfill your dream of becoming that doctor, that lawyer, that theater production individual, whatever it is that your heart aspires to. But we also have to realize that there are some certain courses that tend to be the weeding out of many students who end up aspiring to go to college. And those for a lot of students tend to be some of the big ones, like the big roadblocks of the sciences, the hardcore sciences, or the mathematics. And here we see that generally about only 6% of first generation students do end up completing a calculus level course before they even advance into college. So that is some leeway that many of us are working on to try and fulfill some of those gaps to help some stu more students be more successful. But know that if you wanna, if you're joining us and you're in earlier levels of education, the best thing you can do is strengthen some of those weaknesses so that when you get to that next level, you're not gonna have to confront as much of the difficulties as some of us had to when we were there in your footsteps, okay? The other things is that we wanna show you what happens with this importance of, of education, especially right now, you're seeing the major impact during this pandemic of the individuals who are getting laid off or being um, dispensable, which means you know those who often have the less amount of education are the ones that are gonna be let go, first of all. So you wanna create your own opportunities, your own investments and your own ability to make sure that you can be successful and graduate on time. Uh, the other thing is that we wanna make sure that students can graduate in four years, five years. Um, but what we're seeing is many students are actually, if you're first gen, are having to bypass that opportunity to graduate with their degrees because there's you know, other, other things that happen with us in life. So again, finding those resources, those mentors, those opportunities to make sure that you can make it through and accomplish will secure your opportunities for each and every one of your futures. And one of the most important things that you can do as a first gen student or any kind of student um, is to know who your people are and find your people. Uh, the college enrollment process is not easy. As a director of admissions, I would get confused sometimes when I was explaining our process to, to future students. Uh, so find the people who can help you um, and guide you to be the person of saying, what is a FAFSA and what does it mean to take three credits? I don't know what that is. Um, and it's important to find somebody who you can trust and who you can, when you're feeling lost, because it happens, 
who you could go to. And if you need to close their door in their office and cry and say, I don't know if I'm going to make it to college, or if you're in college, I don't know if I'm going to make it to the next semester, to find those people who can be there for you and help you to realize your potential and to remember that you're there because you have that that drive to reach your goals. Um, and you can also find the people who are going to be your cheerleaders to bring you to help celebrate your big wins and your little wins. Um, I have mentors from college and I graduated from Colorado State University back in the 90s. And I still have messages from my mentor because I'm working on my doctorate right now. And they say, Re Rebecca Delia, are you doing your homework? I'm 43 and I still have my mentor from when I was 19 checking in on me um, and being that chair learner. So you're, you're gonna find them in your counseling office. You're gonna find it in a teacher, a classmate who's going through a similar process that you are, admissions and financial aid people. The college has so many resources. Um, any of the volunteer organizations that you're a part of or any of your churches, coaches, people who can get behind you and, and just be that, that foundation and that support for you. Your family and the family that you're born with and the family that you choose, your friends, um, and pre-college program folks. I was in a program called Upward Bound at Colorado State and had it not been for them, I would not be where I am today. Um, and they're part of the people who are still texting me and chatting with me and saying, Rebecca Delia, are you doing your homework? Um, and your mentors, somebody who is officially your mentor or somebody who is in the field that you wanna go into um, or somebody that you just look up to and you want to, they're the people, person that you want to be when you grow up. Um, so find your people. And please don't forget that, you know, there are people in the world of admissions um, who are here because we're so passionate. We really want to help you guys. So no, no matter where you want to be, uh, where you want to start, like reach out to us. We know a lot of people in the industry. So don't hesitate. Don't feel like you're all in there by yourself. You need somebody to translate. Many of us can speak multiple languages. If not, we can get you to the right people. Okay. The other big ones are again, um, leveraging your resources. And I think Frank was gonna talk about this slide here for us as well. Absolutely. And so just um, going over just a little bit about these resources, essentially what these data, what this data is showing is that there are a lot of resources that go um, underutilized from first generation students, specifically with um, physical and mental health um, resources once, um, you know, once our students are in college and are enrolled. Um, you know, we are often seeing that these uh, students don't reach out. And that's something I think that's culturally stemmed in all of us, right, as being a first generation student, uh, being hesitant to ask for help um, when you are needed help. Um, you know, I just visually, you can maybe raise your hand in your own room. How many of you have parents or family members that are so stubborn and won't ever go to a doctor or ever go to a therapist to seek out, uh, you know, their physical health or their mental health, right? So we encourage you, you know, to break that pattern, to ask for help and reach out for help when you need that, your mental health and your physical health. Um, especially right now in this time as you're looking um, for uh, uh, going through the college application process and we're in this virtual world. That's so important to kind of get that into practice as you're becoming a college student. Academic advising and seeking out for help if you are um, not doing so well in your classes. And you know, honestly, this was something for myself that I found myself being an honors AP student in high school. Then for the first time ever, I was seeing my grades drop lower to C's and and um, was embarrassed to ask for help and was embarrassed to be honest with my parents that I wasn't doing so well because I didn't want to disappoint. And there are so many resources to help you out with, um, with advising. So this is a great question as you're going through again and, and going back to what colleges is the best fit for you or um, and asking about what are the academic advising resources. Also, are there any of these resources for, you know, health, counseling, academic advising, academic support specifically for first generation students. Just so you know that there are staff and resources on that campus that can meet you with where you are now. Um, so that's just such an important um, aspect to this. And I also wanna make sure I saw a question that's been lingering in our chat for a while of 
why college? Why is college so important? And, um, you know, the best answer for the person to answer that is for you of where you want to get the most out of college. I can say for me, you know, it was about um, about giving back to my family and having a better quality of life that I that I grew up with and being able to have a job that provided um, more security for myself. Um, and I also know too, there is such a great representation on this panel already of, you know, you have four year institutions like myself and Lorenzo, two year institutions and community colleges are also a great next step for first generation students as well. You know, we are here as your post-secondary advocates of not just, you know, finish stopping at high school being the end goal, but where to go next. Because you're right, actually, for some students, a four-year institution, at least right away, is not for every first-generation student. Another pathway looks possible. But I can't just say, you know, from family members that are close, and I'm sure Lorenzo, I'm sure Becky also have family members that don't even have a GED or a high school education. And it's such, makes life so much harder um, when, uh, when you are already um, going in to being an adult and not having an education or a certificate of some sort. Um, so in the end, I guess just wanted to make sure that that was just addressed, especially as we're talking about, um, you know, um, of, of breaking these, these patterns that we've been seeing and, and, and making that change. And part of the importance Thank to you, Frank. add to what Frank was saying is, in going to college, it doesn't just change the, your life trajectory, it changes the trajectory of your family. If you, if you have younger siblings, they're gonna see you go to college and they're gonna be like, I wanna be like my sister. I wanna be like my brother. Um, I've seen um, some families where the parent is motivated and inspired by their kid going to college that they go to college. I had one friend who was in Upward Band with me and she went to college at CSU and then her mom started to go to college at CSU and she waited to graduate, my friend waited to graduate so that she can graduate with her mom together at the same time. And so the impact of, of starting this college going culture, it's, it is that ripple effect, you're that rock and everything you do is gonna ripple into, into your family, into your community community, you're going to become that role model that others are going to look up to for guidance. You're going to be that person someday. And don't let that ever be questioned. You are already at this presentation today because you believe that much in yourself and you will make it. Okay. Don't let anybody else ever dictate what they assume you're going to be. But my big saying is, show them who you're going to become, okay? And why go to college again? Like Frank said, it, it's a personal decision for everybody. But for me, it was, I was tired of seeing, you know, what was happening in a daily, you know, cycle of our, our family life that you wait at the end of the month. And then that's when, you know, it gets really tough because you have to learn how to pay the bills and things just don't fall into place like they should. And it's all because of access. And what is it that gives you access? Your brain, your mind, and, and the connections. So hopefully that will help you guys, you know, try to navigate and, again, leverage your opportunities and the people that are around you to make sure that you can get out there. Because as you can see in the slide here, we are not afraid to work. We can get all the things done that we need to. We're, that's the beauty of being first, is that we know how to get down and dirty when we have to and aren't intimidated by any resources or any opportunities that come towards our way, okay? And, Becca, first, gen yeah. and first generation students typically, as you can see from the slides, work more hours than students who are not first generation. Um, they're helping to, to sustain their family. They need to be able to pay their own rent. Um, but working can also means if you're working more, you may, it may take you a little bit longer to complete college and that's okay. Um, I told you about my sister, she didn't get scholarships. It took her seven and a half years. Someone who was a 4.0 high school student took seven years to finish college because she had to quit for a little bit to just work. Um, and there was a time where she was working 40 hours a week as a forklift driver. My sister's this little teeny 
tiny petite thing and she was driving a forklift because that's the job she can get that would sustain her to keep her going to college. But the other thing about working is you're gonna have skills that other students aren't gonna have when they graduate and they enter that world of being a professional. Um, they're gonna know how to be in an office setting or to be able to communicate with somebody who's on their team um, if they're out at a work site. Um, if you're able to secure a work study job on your campus, that is probably one of the best advantages to take that you can ever do. The jobs I had in my undergraduate are what got me my jobs when I graduated. And I can say from the students that we get some, they've never had a job before and working for our department was the first one ever. Um, but they got to again, grow skills that they wouldn't have other places. Um, and they were flexible with their time. We knew you were a student first. Um, so if you needed time off to study and take a test, you got that. Um, and now with COVID-19, a lot more of our students are choosing to work to, again, support the family um, in case parents have lost their jobs and things. We get that. And you need to take care of you and your family. And that's what's the more, most important. And if it takes you a little bit longer, that's okay. It's a long game. It's not, a, it's not I'm going to get done really fast, but it, it may take you a little bit longer. Um, but as long as you get done, you're gonna be able to get to that finish line. So again, elaborating uh, on your network, and this is where I think, um, you know, when you have the, the knowledge of it, because really simple, but when you're barely starting um, and have no clue about this, there is a thing about leveraging your social network that really adds to the value and opportunities that are gonna be granted towards you, okay? So everything that you're doing right now on Facebook and TikTok, y todo esto, like it's great, but learn how to leverage that opportunity too to the next level. So don't just connect with people just for the heck of it, but try to connect with it to try to figure out what other what avenue are you, are you going to leverage me to get to access to when I connect with you, okay? Because right now, and we're seeing it during this pandemic, you really, um, when people need you, you need to write, need to be able to find the right individuals to get you to that other opportunity. And then another big one that I think a lot of us, you know, reflecting on our first gen opportunities was money. How are we going to make this a reality? Well, one of the big things I'm big on is I'm a geek on scholarships because I'm, I'm a big advocate that we do not have to be waiting for money to come our way we need to be proactive and actually apply for it now. Many, it's shocking to me that many, many students right now don't realize that you can be applying for outside scholarships as early as sophomore year of high school. And yet when I talk to students and families every, every time, the conversation is, I'm not gonna be able to afford it. But I ask you, how many times have you submitted an outside scholarship? And very few of you will raise your hand, okay? The other thing for me, being from the Latino community, the Latino culture, one big thing that always happens in my community is the, what would be called the sweet 16, the quinceanera, the sweet 15. And for us, like the quinceanera is an expensive endeavor. Usually right now averaging between 15 to $25,000 for a one night event. And everybody that I know tells me oftentimes, I'm not gonna make the quinceanera happen because it's too expensive. Great. But then literally probably six or eight weeks before the, their birthday, I get the invitation. How do they do it? Because they always get these things called madrinas or padrinos, right? For the one day event, which is awesome. But instead of having to shy away from that cultural experience, I say, why not take that same concept and now ask for madrinas or padrinos for your first year university's deposit? or the first year's college books. Because imagine taking that kind of mentality and padrino madrina to that next level. And now you're investing in your life, not just yours, but as already mentioned in this presentation, making a social impact in your entire family network. Because now it's your siblings, your cousins, your neighbors who are looking up to you and saying, I wanna be you, okay? Frank. Yeah, I, I echo everything that Lorenzo has shared and um, a question from the q and I'm assuming is referring to 
the resources that are listed here. Now, some of these that uh, for scholarships are, um, you know, specific, for, for example, um, for, you know, Hispanic serving Latinx scholarships. Other ones are more generic. And, uh, you know, personally, I've just had more with working with students with FastWeb and scholarships.com that are more that are generic and you can filter through and it pulls up scholarships specific that are applicable to you. Um, what I'll also add about money too is as first generation students, we are often intimidated about applying to um, private schools versus public schools as well because of cost. And we see that price right away and, um, and get discouraged by it. But I encourage you to continue to apply for all the options, right? To apply for those private colleges because something when it comes to money um, is that in different institutions can meet full need for first generation students that go based and award their financial aid based off of need where others would um, merit automatic scholarships, you know, just based off of your academic accomplishments or the strength of your application. So I just want to encourage and kind of leave that piece of, it, of advice of um, don't limit your options um, just based off of the price you see in a brochure. Ask those follow-up questions to your admission counselors about how they award financial aid. And each institution has their own scholarships, whether they're two-year or four-year schools. Um, and then also just so you know, a lot of scholarships are out there for freshmen who are starting at the universities or community colleges. As you go up in your years, become a junior up to your senior year, there are fewer and fewer scholarships that are available to you. If you start at a community college, more institutions are coming up with scholarships for people who transfer in. So that kind of gives you, you're going to a more affordable institution those first two years and then you get access to scholarships that nobody else does unless they also are transfer students. So that's kind of something else to consider as you're, you're developing your path of what's gonna work best affordably for me now um, and later in the long run. And also if you're looking at all the scholarships and you see a $500 one and you're like, should I spend the time to do that? If it takes you one hour to complete a scholarship application that you get $500 for, you just made $500 in one hour. I don't know anybody in real life who makes $500 an hour. So it's worth it to take that time and that effort to look for scholarships, to search for scholarships. Look for ones that will continue to provide you support while you're in college as well. Um, instead of just saying, here's your money, good luck. Look at the ones that are also gonna invest in you because then you'll invest more into them and yourself. And that, that, again, brings us to a really concentrated, simple point is, what is it that you want to accomplish? And how much time are you willing to invest in yourself? Okay. I always tell students, you are your own business. From the moment you step into high school to the moment you leave high school, every detail that you've been, been involved in is going to be critiqued to, at the end of the day, try to sell off your business. Okay. You want to be the best individual that you want to be represented that universities are gonna say, I want to buy that business out flat so that you don't have to pay for it. But at the moment that you decide not to do homework, not to study a little bit harder, not to do these other things, well, then that's when you start messing up your business a little bit. And then universities are not gonna give you top dollar for that, okay? So again, you spend your time and energy in doing what you want, and then we'll make sure that we make it affordable for you, right? Santa Clara is not a cheap school, but I can tell you, we do give a lot of money out there as long as you're willing to get the resources and opportunities for yourselves, okay? And all of these organizations and opportunities and systems from the community college to the CSUs, to UCs, to wherever it is that you guys wanna go, there's a lot of opportunities and access points that you guys can get into so that we can help you guys with education. And real quick to the questions, if you started a community college, um, and want to transfer. In Colorado, our transferring is very, is a simpler process. Um, if you're transferring out of state, whether, whether it's to an out of state public institution or to a highly selective institution like Harvard or Yale, always contact them and say, hey, I'm gonna go to Front Range Community College or CCD, Community College of Denver. Um, what classes should I take there? Cause some of them may have a direct line of you need to take these 10 classes and then transfer some of them it will be you can complete your whole associate's degree and then transfer so the key in transferring 
is always out of state is always talking to your transfer institution because once you leave the boundaries of Colorado, it's up to them what they're gonna take. But we have had students who have transferred to those highly selective institutions and have graduated from Harvard and MIT and things like that as well. Thanks and so with much. That, thank you all for, there you go. Take it away. Thanks so much for joining us tonight, guys. When you, when you close this window, there'll be a link for a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you might provide. Um, also, again, this was just one of the many sessions that's being hosted this week. So be sure to sign up for any additional sessions that you're interested in. Um, in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recording as well as other recordings of different sessions happening this week on the website that you registered. Thanks so much and have a great night, guys.